Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shirtless Plantain Show. It is your host, Tosin, alongside Coach and Dean. We have something to tell you guys, and we want you guys to be excited about this because we're very fucking excited. We're doing a live show in New York on the 24th of July, and it's going to be a Legends Bar, and all of us are going to be there. And if you have an issue with that, come and talk to us in person. So we're all going to be there at Legends Bar. Um, fellas, you know what time we're going to be there? We do, we're not doing Nigerian time, by the way. Oh, no, no, literally... We- 5 30 on the dot guys i say even get that 4 30 because we'll be there from early you can mingle with us you can ask relationship questions or why your wife doesn't love you anymore and shit all that kind of thing you can do you guys can do all of that before we get the live show start get there early or your husband shit. Where gender your husband. Is yeah yeah where, wherever it is or your cat whatever i don't mind <laughs> but yeah he's, let's, you know he's he's t- tell a friend tell a friend oh. if <laughs> no, I was gonna say, I mean, yeah. I, I still ain't bought my plane ticket yet, so I, it's not a sure thing that I'll be there. But you know, if he's going to be there, guys, social, he's going to be there. If you guys, let us know on the socials that you'll be coming. Then maybe I'll make myself available. Maybe, maybe, but you know, it's whatever. Yeah. I do smell nice though, so I, I'll he's going to be the first. <laughs> and the first one there, he's the most. He's, he's the most punctual. I'm most. I'm most. Yeah. Uh, I'll most have regimented hair, guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dean is very punctual. Yeah, so if you guys aren't on time, um, we will get something. Yeah, so it, it, it'll, it will be a problem. I will end your subscription yeah. to the pod, <laughs> personally. Yo, we're going we to be down the street from MoMA. So if you don't see me at the bar, catch me at MoMA. I'm going to be at MoMA. You know, one way or the other, we're going to be doing some cool, dope, artistic shit. So show up, come have fun with yeah. us. It'll be nice to meet you all. For those of you that can make it. Yeah. For those of you that can't, you're dead to me. All right, we can go on now. <laughs> There'll be a YouTube black like, thingy, don't worry, guys. <laughs> but yeah, what Dean said. <laughs> Nigga, we better come through and get us exclusive. What do you mean? <laughs> all right, yeah. let's talk about Euros. Um, we all know what happened. England lost to Spain. 58 years running, no trophies with England. Fellas, where do we start with this? Dean, let me toss it to you. How do you feel about the game? Shit, man. Why, why, why the fuck you toss that shit to me? Why, why would I feel anything about this game? The, the game was kind of boring. I mean, like, you know, we're going to do the Copa Pod later as well. Um, the, it, it, there were finals. They were very tense, very dry, kind of. And to England's credit, I didn't really expect much from them in that game. But the fact that they were able to hold Spain off for essentially an entire half, I was impressed by that, even if it didn't really lead to a victory in the end. Um, I was surprised that they didn't take a cue from Germany and sort of bring a more physical approach to the game. But then again, when most of your players play in the Premier League, which is a very intense league, and they've had a very long season, I mean, like, let's keep it a buck. Declan Rice is our boy, but he has looked tired for the entire seven games he played in this tournament. He was dead on his feet the whole time, but he's Declan Rice, so he kept running. So I just feel like maybe that's why they didn't take that approach. But it seemed very clear to me, like, looking back, and we'll talk about Spain a little bit more because they won this thing. But looking back, I felt like Germany kind of unsettled them with that physical approach. They just didn't get the goals or they just didn't finish because Kai Havertz didn't have his shooting boots that day or Nicholas Fulkrug missed a chance, you know, whatever. Um, so there were moments uh, that, that teams didn't take advantage of. And in truth, the, the final conclusion, because there's really just not that much to say about this game, the better team won. Um, essentially, both teams created a few moments in the game. Spain took advantage of two of those moments. England took advantage of one, and that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think England played poorly at all, but they can't be mad at the fact that they lost the game because they didn't really do enough to win it compared to the team they were facing. Before I let Coach talk, uh, shout out to Luke Shaw. He hasn't played a full 90 since February, and he did a solid job. Um, And like we said a million times, Coach and I and Dean as well, he's been a pro since 16 as well. You know, this is a grown man. And I think in the first half, obviously, Lamine Jamal made shit shake in the second half. Luke Shaw showed him that, listen, as talented as you are, you're still a little ass boy. So that was a good display for Luke. Um, of course, you made a face when Dean said that England didn't play too hot. Do you want to? Yeah. I don't think, do you know, I don't think England have played well the entire tournament. That first half against Netherlands, to me, is just a it's just a flash in the pan shit that's going to be talked about for years when it wasn't anything special. It, it actually, I've watched the game back. It wasn't anything special. And that flurry from from Foden, those 10 minutes he had in that first half, yeah, it was good. It was cool kind of thing. But I'm sorry, the bar is all the way in Australia, guys. There's there's no, it doesn't, there's no reason why England 
should be looking at that and thinking, yeah, like you should be annoyed that it's taking you that long to get those 10 minutes out of one of your most talented players. So we move on to the final now. And I was very, very impressed with Southgate. I can't laugh because he ditched that rubbish three at the back shit and just played a 4 2 3 1, you know, and he put, you know, he put Jude on the left, which I think is, it's not the, it's not a bad move, but it's, it's like also not a great move. But <laughs> It's not a good move, but what it, but what it allowed to do is that it allowed England to to not be completely overrun because what is Jude going to do? He's going to tuck in basically, which is good, and you don't have to worry about oh yeah, Saka having to do extra shifts because he's doing um he's running up and down as a wing back kind of thing. He's actually playing in arguably his best position, even though he was very disciplined. He wasn't playing as a right winger; he was put more playing as a as a right sided midfielder of the three basically, which is fair enough. Um, and I think that actually unsettled Spain. I won't lie to you. I think Spain initially, for the first 20, 25 minutes of the game, didn't quite know how to deal with that because they were expecting a three at the back, you know, England sitting extra deep. And England were quite aggressive in that regard. And I think that was actually a, a master stroke. The issue is, again, we spoke about all this time, is profiles. Why play that, play that formation and have a wing, someone playing wide that is not fast and is not direct? It, it, it boggled my mind. You know, I made a point yesterday on Twitter that the simple fact is, and I don't care how long it's going to last for, you don't, you will never be able to platform Foden and Jude in the same team as long as Southgate is manager. In the, in, even if somebody else does come in, I don't think you platform, platform both of them as well. You pick, you actually pick which one you're going to, or you don't pick either of them. Now, obviously I'm playing Devil, Devil's Africa here. One of them is going to have to play for sure. Go on, Lynn. Well, Coach, real quick. Um... I, I don't think there's a pathway towards both of them playing. I don't know that they're both platformed, mm. but both of them can play in the mm. same team if you use a different kind of striker and you give them different instructions. Yeah. And, I, I, and, I just and, felt like and both again, they were congesting the space, Kane dropping into that space, them two dropping in from what, you know, wide, one guy already being there. It just didn't work. No one was running beyond. So I feel like if you have a you know, striker more like Ivan Tony, for instance, that's actually healthy. Maybe it works. I'd like to see it once or twice more before you ditch it. But ideally, mm. what you're saying is correct. Carry on, coach. Yeah, no, you're, you're spot on. But that's, but that's the thing again. Like, after Harry Kane, you look at the striking options for England. And I'm not, Ollie Watkins is, is fantastic. But let's be, let's be real here. Like, you want, you want to have a better striker than Ollie Watkins is what I'm saying. Like, I, think he's, I think he's fantastic. And he's been one of the best strikers in the league, arguably in Europe. For the last Question. few years, but Question. who's on. better? Who would you rather have in your team, whichever team it is? England, Arsenal, yeah. Nigeria. Yeah, Alvaro Morata yeah. or Oli Watkins. Do you know what's crazy when you when you actually put it like that? I'm still picking Alvaro Morata, and I've slandered ah, the guy on. for ages. I've slandered him for ages. Tosin, can you stop this fucking arnachist? All I'm going to say is this. I know, I know, I know. I, know, I, I know, would say this in Yoruba. Morata Oshi. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for real. No, no, I get the point. I get the point. No, honestly, I get the point. I get the point Dean's making it. That Oli Watkins is a sharpshooter. And he does a lot. He does a lot of fantastic and, self, and selfless running. But I still feel as if pedigree-wise, like, in these situations, yeah, the, the, look, the goal against Netherlands, fantastic. And he's going to absolutely... You know he's gonna eat off that. Fine, no issue, no issue with that. But like, you get, look, look at where Morata has played for the last ten years. Like, Pretty it's not privileged. an accident. You know what I mean? It, it, it's not an accident though. It's literally, it's, 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 it's not an accident. As much as I cuss him, it's not an accident. But anyway, bro, it's that's that's ninety nine percent aura. I beg, the man is handsome. Yeah. The man is tall. Come on, man. <laughs> look at where he is. And 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 he's and he's got a, he's got a fantastic first touch and actually plays. For the team, which again, I'm not saying Oli Watkins doesn't, but we're talking, I'm, we're talking pedigree in it. Like, let's be honest. Look, this is Oli Watkins' first season in the Champions League next year, and then, and then Morata. This is what he's 13th in a row. I don't know. Like, it's. But well, here's here's the point I really want to make, and I think it's well, it's an issue with you know I, I literally just saw Barney Rone, wonderful art, uh, writer for the Guardian article about England needs to, out, if they, need to sell, if they need to sell Wembley to go get Klopp. Like, I think this is mm. a remnant of the fact that you guys still care so much about your royal family and shit. English mm. people are star fuckers. That's the problem. Yeah. Like, we've watched yeah. generations of national teams 
dominate, even have like many dynasties. You know, we had France in the 90s or, you know, 90s, 2000s. We had uh, Spain, you know, their earlier iteration that had Jadi and the SLM guys. Like, people often forget that to start that whole Spain run, they had to get rid of Raul. Raul was a big fucking mm. deal at the time, but because everything worked afterwards, we don't talk about it mm. anymore. And I just feel as if there's mm. too much, the, the main issue, forget the profiles, forget the fact that there's no philosophy. If England can just get to a point where they care less about people's egos, then I think the national team can actually move forward and win something. Because that's what killed England at the end yeah. of the day. Like, oh, Kyle Walker is one of my man, mans. He got to play. Kerry Kane's back is hurting, but he got to play because he's one of my mans. Champions League, win, Champions League win all, all that bullshit. Yeah, no, you're all right. that bullshit. You know, like, if, if, you know, then back yeah. to your point, if we just focused, if Southgate had just focused on the profiles to fit the system that he already had mm. in place that was working for years, a system that yeah. had Rashford in it, at one point had Sterling in it, at yeah. one point had Maguire in it. You know, if you just focus on that and just replace people like for like, I think England probably win this tournament and they play better throughout. I think so too. I think so too. That, and, that's, and that's the thing that, regardless of how look, culturally Spain are, miles, are still miles ahead of England in it culturally, and we'll probably get onto that point in midfield, but I feel like we've probably got to touch on a few things, but yeah, miles ahead. But in terms of the actual talent that was on display, I still generally think some of these players here yeah, might not be as good as some people think. But I'm not gonna sit here. I'm not gonna sit here and lie and think Lenormand is better than flipping John Stones. Let's not take the piss, man. Let's be let's be honest here. Like you know, Cucurella is not better than Luke Shaw. Like like it's actually where Spain absolutely trump England is midfield. Like I hold, hold my hand and say, look, Spain just. Oh, that's better there, and there's, and there's no shame in saying that. But everywhere else, I'm not. And the game is won in won and lost in both boxes, regardless of how people want to speak about midfield and midfield, midfield. Yeah, it's won and won and lost in both boxes, especially in tournament football, especially in football. So, you know, Southgate has somehow managed to get every part of the team wrong, whether it was in defense. Well, to defense, I'll give it to him. Actually, Gahey was Gahey. To be honest, like he had no choice there, but he definitely got midfield wrong. He definitely got. Um, the attacking options wrong, a hundred percent. It's just strange to me. You have all of this talent, and you still manage to get it wrong somehow. Gordon not getting a minute. Gordon not getting a minute after not bringing Rashford is is blowing my mind. Still, it's criminal. Like Jared criminal. Bowen, yeah, Jared Bowen getting like garbage minutes. Like all these players who are outlets, which make your life easier. Like for some reason, they they just didn't play because you're right. You know, England are star fuckers. Bellingham. For the overhead kick was great and whatnot, but look, he had a crap tournament, guys. Like, I don't think there's no, we shouldn't even be be ashamed to say that kind of thing. It's not that we're getting on to him, but he wasn't good this tournament. He wasn't, he hasn't been good probably since, you know, towards the second half, the second half of the season, to be honest. But again, for some reason, like, you know, we, we, we start worshipping these guys and it's like, you actually have to start playing who is in form and who is actually good for the team. You know, Tosin, I'm rambling on a little bit, but I'll just yeah, let, let's 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 move on a little bit. I'm, we'll, we'll get yeah, to the I'm, midfields. I'm gl- I'm glad you brought up Jude because now apparently Jude is the scapegoat. And I said this earlier today, right? England since 1966 have always found a different scapegoat. Every single tournament, they've always found somebody to blame. And the real issue with England, and I want you guys to chime in as well. I want to kind of talk about this. We've had Bex in '98 when he had, you know, when they did the effigies in '96. Innocent. South, Southgate was a criminal in '96, right? It was Southgate was a criminal in '96. Guilty. Yeah, for sure. Um, who was the criminal in '94? They didn't qualify for the World Cup in '94. Probably blamed it on Skulls. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't um, <laughs> the, the manager. The manager. Taylor. Was it yeah, Taylor. Taylor. Uh, it... What what they call yeah. him? What they, they gave him some uh-huh. really mean name. I forget. I forget. Yeah. We go to Euro 2000. Another scapegoat. 04. I mean, Steven Gerrard was very guilty. He was responsible for that shit, actually. Um, that's the only time they can blame somebody. <laughs> yeah, that back pass was nasty. Um, oh, wait. They didn't qualify for the Euros. Um, the Wally and the Broly. Steve McLaren. That's what they call yeah. it. Yep. That was yeah. harsh. <laughs> that was harsh. So we can go on and on and on. England's always trying to find a scapegoat. And while Drew Bellum didn't have a good tournament, as we said, the real issue for me, and I see England, is that they're not blaming that system. You have shit coaches. You have the English Premier League, which has been running since 1992. Not a single goddamn English coach has won your own league. Fam, look inwards. 
Look inwards. For 32 years, you mean to tell me not one of your coaches can win that league? Mm-hmm. What is going on with your coaches? I, I think England actually does develop good coaches. Like, I think Rob Edwards is a good coach. Not I either. think Rand Potter is a good coach. I think Eddie Howe is a good coach, even though we don't like Jason Tindall. You know, there are lots of good coaches in England, and they develop good coaches. English coaches coach English youth teams to wins. England has won the, are, U17 the, Euros, the U17 the U21 Euros, the Carlsley, you know. And I think the, the issue isn't necessarily that they don't develop coaches. It's more that there's no overarching philosophy that sort of – that the coaches have to abide by. Like all those coaches that I listed, if I think about the way their teams play or the formations that they generally play, they're all different because mm-hmm. there's, no, there's no English idea of the sport, you know. And I don't know that that's mm-hmm. necessary to be a winning team, but I do think it helps because when we look at the teams that actually win things, there's some sort of guiding philosophy like Luis de, uh, Luis de la Fuente won this tournament and he's essentially a nobody by English fan standards. Most of the people who watch that final, do not know who that man is. But he's been part of the Spanish mm-hmm. FA for like 10 years or some shit. Just some guy. And that's, carry on, Tosin. Uh, with Luis de Elefante, I'm glad because I was looking for a segue to say this. He won the U19 Euros, right, in 2015. He won the U21 Championships in 2019. He got silver at the Olympics in 2020. And now he's won Nations League and Europa Champions League. Uh, he won the Europe and, you know, won the Euros with Spain. So. This isn't some guy, you know, it isn't some random guy. And it isn't by, and it's by design, right? Like, if you look at his team from 2015, the um, team that he won the U19 championship with, um, Rodrigo's on that team. Uh, Mikel Moreno was on that team. Um, I think Unai Simon was on that team. You look at his team that won the, um, that, that won the U21 in 2019. Uh, Unai Simon was on that team as well. Uh, who else was on that team? Um, Omo. And Omo was on that team. Mikel Moreno's on that team. Um, Oh, yes, if I was on that team. So there's a succession plan, right? Yeah, there's a, mm-hmm. there's a consistency and there's a philosophy. Like, mm-hmm. we all know, like, go tap any random football fan. They may get it wrong, but everyone has an idea of how Spain plays. Oh, they play that ticky tack yeah. bullshit. You know, like, what? Like, this team actually reminds me most of um, Luis Enrique's Barcelona. You know, oh, where it was so like, glad okay, you it's, said that. It's positional oh, play, you. but because we have these fucking demons on the wings, we're just going to be very yeah. direct with it. And that's ex- that's yeah. exactly what they did in this tournament. And yeah. you know the system above stars. Rodri is their best player, regardless of what you think of who played well or who didn't play well in this tournament. He's their best player. He barely loses games. He gets injured at halftime. Before we even figure out wh- what the hell is going on, they've taken the lead in the game because Martin Zubimendi steps in and doesn't miss a beat. So I'm so glad you brought that that point up because the, we talk about the coaches. We have to talk about the players that England are producing stylistically as well. Here's the issue, right? I don't know what that, who's making that sound. Sorry. Here's the here's the I mean, issue here, basically. Oh, so Zubimendi came in, right? And we did those of us that have been, that know who he is or know you know Spanish football kind of thing. We're like, oh yeah, lack for lack, it's fine. Even if he offers certain different things um, to to um, Rodri, especially in terms of controlling space. With the ball, he can still offer some of the qualities that Rodri has, albeit, you know, a, a couple of levels below. But again, international football, if you're possible at doing something, you should be okay, right? He came in and you could have... You, you, Spain probably left out about 10, different, 50, 10 or 15 different midfielders who could do that job as well, who can play in that manner as well, right? England just now, literally just now, has somehow managed to unearth someone who plays to somewhat as, as almost not even similar just uh you know closer to Carrick than what they've ever had 15 years later guys that's the issue they've got everything else right in terms of the forwards that we're producing the attacking players we're producing um the fullback especially the fullback the fullbacks England's fullbacks are just are crazy to be honest center backs conversation to be had about there but I've got theories on that as well but for the most part we're producing the right types of players in those areas, right, that I mentioned. But deep line playmakers or number sixes, England have only just started, have somehow managed to unearth Adam Walton. And there's a couple more. The fella that went to um, Tottenham oh, no. recently. Gray. Yeah, do you know, like, 
how many how how many of these sorts of players can we count in our lifetime England have actually produced? With Spain, I'll be honest, with, with Spain, I can re, I can read off quite literally twenty names off the top of my head. Go on. Well, I think the issue with England isn't so much that you guys don't produce those kind of players. Those players exist. The problem is just mm. the qualities that that football culture values. You know, every time someone shows up, by the time if you're a ten year old in England and you can take the ball on the half turn, they just move you forward. Mm. Mm. Like there's a good chance that someone like Jack Wil like Jack Wilshire didn't get to play as the tempo setter for England until he was so injured that they were like, well, we don't want him to run so much. But when he was decent, they played him as a forward playing player. Like, mm. like the best Jack Wilshire national team memories are him scoring goals against like Slovakia and shit. Like when he was up the field, when in actuality, mm -hmm. his best qualities were setting the tempo deeper in midfield. But mm -hmm. it, there's just something about the culture where it's like, who can control the ball? So it's going to stop that or I'll fight you. If someone can control the ball, they just move them off the field, you know. And I yeah. think you know the national team has suffered for that, unfortunately. Hopefully, Adam Wharton looks like the one. Um, he this needs is, to this is what I'm saying. club at some point. He looks like the one for sure. Yeah, yeah no, you absolutely, you absolutely spot on in regards to Wharton, but also even someone like Mainu. Mainu, I don't think should play deeper, but he has the qualities to potentially do that anyway. Kind of, I, I, I think he could. I, I personally wouldn't play in there. But if you're looking at a toss-up between starting him and Gallagher as your six, I'm I'm sorry, I'm picking Manu every time. I don't I don't I actually don't care. I don't care if you can't carry as much cover as much space. I'm not like we can go through the league and find a hundred Gallagher's, right? And that's again the problem. We brought Gallagher to the World Cup, even though there's a, there's hundreds of him already. And he's not very good. I'm not bashing him, but I don't, he's just not very good, kind of thing. And it doesn't make sense that he was somehow being the option in the first two, three games to come off the bench. What is he providing for England? Like, genuinely, what is he, what, what is he, what special qualities in tournament football? You need, you need like special qualities, regardless of if you've got 20 of those players, kind of thing. If there's a certain special thing, that, that's why Rodri plays over Zuber Mendy. That's literally why, because yeah, they've got similar qualities, but he does it. He, he's, he's able to do things that Zuber Mendy can't. Despite them having similar um, similar qualities with the ball, kind of thing. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense to me that England will see these players, kind of thing, and it shows that there's a shift. Because just be honest, if Walton turned up in 2018 or 2022, he's not going to the World Cup. He's just he's not going. England took a chance on two players who had never played Premier League football until this season. You see well, what I'm I saying? A quick, I have a quick question for you before we move on. Yeah. Uh, you look at that U twenty one team last year. Lee Carsley won the championship yeah. with, right? The Euro, the Euro squad with, right? Do you think any of those players are, are like not getting called up that should be called up? Like someone like Angel Gomez has been killing at Lille. Do you think like players like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, go, who was it? so who was that team? There was there was Morgan Gibbs White as well. There was obviously mm -hmm. ESR. There was um, Curtis Jones. Um, don't mention a goalkeeper because he's one of the worst goalkeepers I've ever seen in my life. The Burnley James goalkeeper, Shafford. James Shafford. Yeah, let's not even go there. Like, he can stay where he is. James um, Garner was there. James Garner. Was, but of course, do you know what? Maybe, do you know what? Yeah. I'm not being funny. And maybe it's because it's just a bias here. But if you're going to take Gallagher, why not just take Morgan Gibbs White instead? <laughs> you know, like you've got nothing yeah. to lose here. He's, he's, like, he's, let's be honest. Bring something special to the table, but we could be all here all day. Shitting on England, yeah. even within we the could. even within the limitations Southgate placed on himself, I think in a lot of ways yeah. he failed. Like, why yeah. take Gordon if you're not going to use him? Why take Tony and give him like two, three minutes at the end of each game to be some sort of emergency firefighter? It's just dumb. Um, ultimately, I have to give the manager some credit because despite he basically went mm. there and handcuffed one arm behind his back, basically decided we're not going to play with the left side mm. because Mikel Arteta does it at Arsenal. And somehow they're really good. Mm. Like, bro, you're not Mikel. First off, you're not handsome. Second, you're too tall. Anyway, you know, you don't dress as mm. nice. Your steez not as cool. You know, like your fucking threads is whack. Let's not get into all that. But the real credit <laughs> needs to go to Spain. Ultimately, we have to we have to show a lot of love yeah. to Spain because it's very rare. I can't remember the last time right. I saw a team win seven games in a tournament. They won every game they played in this mm. tournament, and they won against bro, Germany. And against they won against Croatia. They won against Italy. They want to get They're France. Close and carry on <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was going to say, like, you know, Spain really, it's rare that we said this to the podcast, like, 
we don't really see the best teams win tournaments. Usually we don't see that in football, right? And it's the first time I can generally say, like, in a while, the best team generally won. And they beat everybody's ass. One of the things that I love that Spain did in the second half was adjust, right? Mm-hmm. It happened immediately with the first goal. They adjusted very well. They knew how to pin Luke Shaw, who was playing very well in Laminia Mal, but he found a little bit of space. Nico Williams was open. And again, we're going to shit on Spain on England again. But Kyle Walker, he was focused on too many things. I don't know if it was his family. I don't know what he was focused on, but that man was not focused. <laughs> I don't know. Did. No, let's, yeah. let's be honest here. Kyle Walker, Kyle Walker is, is, has been a liability for England this entire tournament. And, and it's smart. Yeah, yeah, man, to be fair, but smart coaches has, and smart teams. Kyle, Go on. Kyle Walker has been a liability his entire career, okay? Yeah. The difference he's between him fast, and... You know? yeah, th- yeah, that's it. He's just very fast, so he can recover and fix his errors. Now that he's 34, uh, bro, like, Nico Williams is not your mate anymore, bro. Like, your legs are yeah. not what they used to be. You can't give a player that much space at any level. Like, I'm scoring mm-hmm. that goal, man, and I got one leg at this point in my life. Like... You know, it's just, and it's a shame because it's like, again, despite all the mistakes Gareth made during this tournament, if he just like, if he leaves one of the Spurs players out, if he leaves Kyle Walker out or he leaves Harry Kane out, they could have stolen this trophy for real, for real. Like Kyle Walker, all I could think coming home from the bar after watching this game was that if Kyle Walker didn't play, England could have stole this, you know, like even with Harry Kane walking around and not getting into the boxes to finish crosses and shit, like Bro, we could do a whole podcast on Harry Kane, just how terrible he was in this tournament. Yeah. You know. But you know, he's it's he's, he's, he's the he, white captain and not gonna say nothing about him, you know. It's whatever. Um yeah. but yeah, big shout out to Spain, man. They 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 kicked ass. The second goal was was really good. I thought it was yeah. offside, but it was just a really good goal. Mm-hmm. Again, Kyle Walker's issue. But the play of the game for me was Danny Omo, man. When he when he yeah. calls when he when he when he cleared that ball off the line, I was like, Yeah, England's cursed. Yeah. It there, was, there, who headed the ball first? Was it? It was. It was. It was, no, it was Rice, Rice and Gahey. It was Gahey. Yeah, Rice and Gahey. Yeah. Gahe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so here's so so here's, so here's the thing with with Spain getting their goals and how they got their goals, right? Smart adjustments, smart players, but also I don't want to talk about midfield again. But it, I just feel like it comes it comes back to the midfield. England sold sold themselves up the river because they couldn't control the game in both boxes, and and Spain took initiative in midfield. They could have like England could have stolen this trophy even with a dysfunctional, crappy midfield. Like let's let's be honest here, and I think people really underestimate the um the effect having essentially two nukes on either flank, basically regardless of who they are. T- yesterday it was. It was Jamal and, and Nico Williams. But having two war, absolute warheads in those positions means your life as a midfielder, especially as a number six or someone that's playing next to the, to the number six as well, it makes your life so much easier because of space. Teams get scared. Teams are conservative. You can give Rodri half a yard and he will kill. This is why he doesn't lose games because at international and club level, he has he has these warheads. He has these nukes. He has Haaland and Doku for for, for for City. He has for for Spain. We know who he has for, for Spain, guys. So you give Rodri half a yard and you're dead. But you don't get you don't get half a yard. Anything. You get you get a bit more than you get three to five. Teams back off here though because they're thinking, you know what? We can ha- we can control the space. We will just drop a little, little bit deeper. But no, because these guys, this is what they're. This is the cultural thing. This is what they're built for. They're built to to play under pressure. So the moment they're not under pressure, it's like they, it's on easy mode for them now. Like Fabian Ruiz, the amount of times he was able to get the ball and turn because he knew England was scared of Yamal and what do you call it, Yamal and um, and Nico Williams. So again, he's made life easier. So then he can find Omo between the lines, and then guess what? Someone gets sucked into the ball, right? Someone comes across, and then guess what? The space in the wing now. It's it. it, it England, England sold themselves out, out, out of the world because their midfielder was, dis- was dysfunctional but then you only have Saka who is technically your only outlet but guess what he's doing doggies all the way back to his own goal most of the game because again who else is on the <laughs> other side to make them scared like and, and, what, and, and Jude the fullback behind like, you take, are you taking the back behind him is an idiot Kyle Walker again yeah. handicapping like first off Southgate should have been platforming Saka because let's keep it a buck we're yeah. biased we're all Nigerians, and if we're yeah. not Nigerians, we're Arsenal fans on this podcast. But I can't yeah, see how you can me. watch the seven games we saw 
and not acknowledge that Saka was the best attacker England had in this tournament. When he got the ball, things happened. Unfortunately, the fullback the behind him seems to realize that if I give the ball to the guy in front of me, good things happen for my team. And there was a lot of Kyle Walker getting the ball, then turning inside onto his weak foot to get the ball back to players that are not as dangerous as Bukayo Saka. Meanwhile, Spain, mm. everything they did was designed to get the ball to one of their wingers. If Yamal wasn't mm. popping at the moment, get it over to the other side to Williams. You know, and their goal, the first goal was a combination between both of them. Mm-hmm. Simple. Bro, get the to ball to your best you, players. Yeah. Bro, to add to your point, right? I tweeted yesterday that you see what happens when you get Bukai Saka in space, you create magic. So I was like, that, he didn't do nothing. I was like, shut the fuck up, okay? He literally drew three players towards him. That's the whole point. Put it this, if you double team Saka, you're dead essentially because he's so used to it now. He can get past two players and kill you. So, so now, yeah, he is being triple teamed. So, yeah, you take him three players out of the game because your, your most dangerous player has essentially freed up space for everyone else. So, all he needs to do is roll a simple pass into someone's feet because they're in tons of space now. Like, it's a, it's a basic. View. I'm not being, I'm not, and I'm no disrespect to him, but nobody's double teaming for Foden, bro. Like, let's be honest, like, they're just not going to double team. Yeah, him. I haven't even talked about him, man. I don't even <laughs> want to talk about him because yeah. guess what? Someone called him 007. Zero goals, zero assists, seven games. That's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> the like, like, point if, is, it feels good to pick on any of the players, to be honest, because, again, it all, goes, yeah. it all goes to the leadership. Like, Garrett Southgate didn't really yeah. set the team up to put people in a position to succeed. So even Foden, as much as, you know, because, again, a lot of the reason why Foden got to, essentially Foden got the keys in this tournament and it's like, bro, mm. how you getting the keys when there's a, a minimum of three, easily four attackers in that squad that are more suited to build the team around, you know, and mm. I can't blame a player for, you know, if the coach gives me the mantle, I'm going to take it on. I'm not going to tell him, yo, coach, like, I think Bukayo is better than me, or I think we should play to service Harry Kane more often. Like, I'm not going to, nobody's going to say that. You got you to go mm. for it, but it was really frustrating in that final watching him walk towards the set pieces and do all that. It's like, bro, you've showed us the last six games that you're not it. Why, why doesn't the manager see this? Every time you come off the field, England does something. They equalize or they take the lead. Like, if that's not a signal to the coach, then what is? And that's the reason why, you know, even though Gareth has done enough technically that people feel as if he should be able to write his own ticket as to whether he stays or not, I think the fact that he couldn't see that shit, the fact that he couldn't see that when I begin this tournament, either Menu or Wharton should be my midfielder to go with Rice. The fact that he couldn't mm. see, even though the evidence was right there in the whole world's face, that, hey, every time you remove Foden and Kane, the team plays better. I don't know. I, th- I think that's enough for him to lose his job. People talk about Deschamps, but guess what? Deschamps has won a World Bunch Cup. It. Deschamps has won the Nations League. He has trinkets. You know, so you don't just get to show up and lose at the last hurdle. And, you know, because you're going to get a, you know, a, what they call that shit that, that they be giving them. They be knighting niggas and shit. You know, like, yeah. Sir Garrett Southgate. This nigga ain't win nothing, man. The whole point is to win. And when you see paths to victory, when we all see paths to victory, I don't get paid to coach a team. I see the path to victory yeah. for England. And their own manager doesn't see it. He's, he should go. In the great words of Wiley, take it back. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> he needs to go. He needs to go. Let's, go uh, let's talk about team of the tournament before we get out of here. Uh, you guys, let's let's do this live. Um, we all do this in unison, I guess. Who's our goalkeeper? We're gonna go into four three three because that's what Johan Cruyff told us to do. Uh, goalkeeper. Uh, I'm well, still gonna I'll, go. I'll go young. first. I'll go first if you don't like the p- person. You yeah. There you. Go. I like who you mentioned. There we go. We got the goalkeeper, yeah. Mike Magnon from France. Okay, I was gonna say George's goalkeeper, but fair enough. <laughs> we're not we're not having we're not, we're not having natural we're not having not, um charity man this is a this is yeah, a real I, life I man this ain't, like, this ain't mighty ducks man right i feel like giving george's uh, mamardash billy the 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 goalkeeper spot in the sps team of the tournament would be the equivalent of giving it'd be like the 20 times that david de gea won the golden glove you know what that meant it's because you guys sucked okay yeah. um <laughs> hey danny carver holland right back <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so we're going with Mayan and goal, Carver Hall right back, which by the way, Danny Carver Hall is underrated as fuck. Yeah. Super underrated. But uh, I, I don't, yeah. I, don't okay. feel, I don't feel I, like I, he's I'm, underrated. I'm okay with that. Because we know football. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you know, like it's like, I mean, how much more are you supposed to rate a fucking right back? Fucking Danny <laughs> I understand Carver Hall. That. 
Whatever. Unless he plans a coup and starts running Spain before he turns 50, he's properly rated. You know, it's fine. Um, uh, let's go Seven, to the left back. I won't let. Oh, left back. Oh, Kukurea, man. That's, that's easy. Who do you Although got? I will be honest, I, I, do, I do think Luke Shaw. No, to Kukurea. No, no, no. no I'm, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying Luke Shaw for the 45 minutes that he, 245 minutes that he played, I don't think Kukurea got got to those levels i'm not saying that he doesn't deserve to be there but i'm just saying those I, the levels that luke shaw showed i'm just I'm, I'm partial to luke shaw because he's just a fantastic footballer i'm sorry so that's going for Kadioglu, turkey i think for the was you know the best one watching this tournament they couldn't defend for shit what? but he was the best one i watched let's go with that cool yeah, that, um, that'll, that'll ruffle some feathers. That'll ruffle some feathers, yeah. I'm happy with Kadrugi as well. I, I sung them up before as well, to be fair. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Cool. Um, talking like that back. instead of Turkey, nigga. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think I think it's obvious. The only thing, issue is that they both played left centre-back, but Saliba and Gehi, I think, are the obvious choices, like, easily. For me, yeah, I, let's I move on. I don't think Gehi is an obvious choice at all, to be honest. He he did yeah, well, so. but I remember what was the game? Was it against Slovakia? That was not yes, a good but, game for Gehi. I'm sorry, my brother. Yeah, but that wasn't that wasn't his fault though. That goal that he gave, they gave him away the yellow. That wasn't his fault. That wasn't, wasn't his, his fault. fault. But he That's looked it. bad. I'm sorry, he looked bad. Um, and I have a proposal, guys. Why hmm. do we need uh, two center backs? For what? For what none of hmm. none of these other southern backs were even chatting to Saliba. It should just be Saliba and nobody no. else. Let's get some more midfielders in. Fuck it. To be fair, he could probably do it on his own anyway. So, <laughs> so okay, let's let's we'll go ahead and round this up then. Well, okay, so so far we have Mike Mayan in goal, Danny mm-hmm. Kabahar, Freddy mm-hmm. Kagalagbu at left back, and who's mm-hmm. our center back? Saliba and who else? We need another That's person. No, Saliba, more. Saliba and Saliba. No, Saliba is good by himself. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I need an extra person. No, 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 not like for no. real. Saliba is good by himself. We we doing a three at the back. This is highly offensive. Okay. Like, come on, man. There wasn't a lot of goals in this tournament. I'm not trying to give defenders any shine. Fuck all that. They, you know, it's not. They yeah. won right. The yeah. All right, coach, you got Rodri, right? Do I have to do? Yes. <laughs> I'll be, honest, I'll be honest with you. I'm picking up. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll, before Rodri can get in there, but before we put Rodri in, I'm putting Fabian Ruiz in there. So. Yeah, I'm putting in both. Yeah, so pause. Um, <laughs> God, <laughs> yeah, that 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 came at the right time, honestly. That came, oh, that came at the right thank time. you. Looking on brother, you always got my back. Yeah. Pause on. Uh, so um, Roger and Fabian Ruiz. Um, yeah, I got I got Bukayo Saka in there. I don't. I just feel Fox. he was England's best player, and and Fox. they made it to the final. So somebody from that team should be there. You know, like. That's how I feel about that. Uh, uh, Danny Omo didn't start the tournament, but he was so good in the minutes he played. I feel like he has to be in the team. Tosin, you agree? Hey. Yeah. That's my guy, Vampire Zone. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that midfield now. Okay. okay. Attack, attackers is going to be funny because... So wait, what we still got? So we got how many plays do we have right now? I, I'm not a good we, math. We need three right, more. So, we need three more. So, so we got Mayan, Carvajal, Cardioglu, Saliba. That's our defense and goalkeeper. Now we got Rodri and Fabian Ruiz as our central midfielders. And we got Saka on one wing. We got Daniel Mo on the other. We don't really care where they play. So now we got three attackers to pick. Yeah. It's obviously the, the two rockets from Spain plus one. Yeah. Who is that plus one? I don't want to say it. Cody Hackman. Uh, well, you say somebody. No, Cody no, Hackman. No. Yeah. That's Maybe my I'm, choice, Coach. I'm not got? having him. Who you got? I'm not having him, man. But who you got then? It's it's been it's been a it's been a shit tournament. Let's be honest. <laughs> the more I think about it, it's like, bro, he was that he was actually. Actually, I got it. I got it. Might as well just put Morata, man. Huh? Might as well put Morata back. No, no, <laughs> no, no we're not gonna do that. Our strike is gonna that. be on goal. It's gonna be who? Yeah, on goal. On go. <laughs> yeah, we could do you know what? that's not a bad shot. I don't know. That's well here's the question. Hey, wait, 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 guys, can we determine what country is on goal from? What is his racial makeup? Is on goal black? Because if on goal is not as black as Cody Gapo, 
then it's got to be Cody Gakpo. Own goal is the descendants of colonialism. So yes, it's black and Indian. All right. So we got own goal, Lamine and Nico. Fair? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's run the team back so everyone can know. So we have Mike Manyan and go, right? Yeah, check. Okay. Give us our center backs again. Uh, uh, we got, got Kadioglu left back. Yeah. Kadioglu. Saliba is the only center back. We did that on purpose. Rodri, Fabian Ruiz, Fukayo, Dani Omo, Ongo, Lamin Yama, and Nico Williams. I think that's a good team. Perfect. I'm happy with that. Perfect. Perfect. Like, now that said, if this team had to play France, they're only scoring one goal. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, who's your player of the tournament? What is your guys' – what is your favorite goal of the tournament? And that's, like, our last question we get out of here. What about player of the tournament, guys? <laughs> yeah, who's the player of the tournament? Player of the tournament. It's, to me, for me, it's, it's Fabian Ruiz. I think that's that's. I, I think it's unequivocally him. It has to be him. Like, I don't want to hear about Rodri, guys. I don't want to hear about. I don't want to hear about Yamal or Nico Williams. To be honest, as much as I love those guys, it's easily Fabian Ruiz. So easy. I think I'm not mad at that selection, but I think it's Dani Omo. Like this, this no, tournament, no, like no. most tournaments, but more so than many of the tournaments we watched, was about just those moments. A lot of these games were not great. Like you said, it's, it, it was a bit of a shit tournament, in your opinion. And the moments made the difference. And I feel like Danny Omo had more moments than anybody else. Now, he got the aura of a stillborn vampire. So we're not going to give him the love he deserves, you know. And it's going to take Pep ruining his fucking game for us to give him the respect he fully deserves as a player. But I think he was fantastic in this tournament. Mm. Like, anybody that can come he in was, and not make you miss Pedri. Like, he replaced Pedri in that lineup and nobody misses Pedri. And that's Pedro. Hmm. We love Pedro, right? We're yeah. a pro Pedro yeah. podcast for sure. And he's not even black. That's crazy. But Fabian Ruiz <laughs> is a good choice. I'm, I'm willing to yield on that. I'm willing to yield on that. I, I yeah. think he was fantastic. And um, it's funny. People keep talking about him moving from PSG as if that's a thing that can happen unless PSG feels like it. They do have, they still have hmm. a lot of money, right? Did something change? Yeah. Wait, Danny Omo's not at PSG, bro. No, no, no. no I'm Ruiz. talking about Fabian Ruiz. Fabian Ruiz, are you? Yeah, people talking you know, like he's not going to move. He's just going to sell him because you know he had a good tournament, and but I, I think they'll keep him. Like I'm sure Luis Enrique likes him. Yeah, yeah. I, and all of you who want Mikel Moreno, he doesn't want to leave. Yeah. So there's no, that too. <laughs> um, do we want to hand out any like you know bad play awards? We don't we don't do any of that. We don't want to boo anybody today. We want to be yeah. Peaceful no, today? no. I honestly, honestly speaking, like I think in terms of biggest letdown, it's easily fulfilling, guys. Like, let's not shy away from it. This isn't bullying. This isn't targeting. It's just telling the truth. He was the biggest letdown. It has nothing to do with his ability or talent. Incredibly talented, intelligent, incredibly gifted. He just didn't perform. And, and we have and to be it, honest about these things. And that's fair, Coach. And in his slight mm. defense, I want to reiterate, a lot of it mm. is the fault of the coach and the system because there was no fucking system. Okay, okay. And, and that's fine. That's fine. I, I can I can yield on that. However, he does have a teammate, <laughs> maybe even two teammates, who, regardless of the system, they still found a way to do shit. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm look, man. So 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 yeah. Like, let's just call it what it is. And I think and I and I generally do think what's funny is I generally do think whoever England get next as coach, they'll probably recognize almost straight away that you don't rely on Foden to be one of your main men. Foden is fantastic when he doesn't have any responsibility. He's, that's well, his can, game, can, and it, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. Coach, can we be sure that the next coach of England will recognize that when the media does dumb shit like vote him Player of the Year when he's like the fourth most important attacker on his team, and they say, "Well, he has to play. He has to play." They never back it up. They're just like, "He's just so good." When you watch him play, the feeling he gives you, and blah, blah. like it's a lot of pressure on these coaches. But hopefully, the next guy is smarter than Gary Southgate is, and that shouldn't you know, be too just, hard because. You know, no, you're, you're spotting Bruno. That's just one more thing on Full Foden, right? Not too much of a deep dive, but I, I'll be honest, right? No, 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 no. I'll be no, no. Let, let me just, let me just, let me just, let me cook for a second, man, please. <laughs> like, let's let's be honest here. Yeah, they've called him. They said that he was, and I've never surprised this, but they said that, especially to come about this year. They they said he's the best in the world on the half Hold turn. On. Go on. Before you finish, they call him the stock pot in the after, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. 
and which I think is less disrespectful because we know what Iniesta was was like in half spaces, guys. Like we know and twenty four years old too. By yeah. the way. So there we go. But we, they were calling him the best in the world in, in the half spaces on the half turn, and we know who, we all know who what the correct answer is to that. But I think it's generally disrespectful when you look at the player that they they un, that they're overlooking because of ball striking. Like that's actually Full Foden's best quality. Nothing wrong with that, but Full Foden's ball striking is absolutely incredible. So they said that like, his teammates talk about him in training. That's why he does that celebration. They call him the sniper because in training, he just lets it go and it just flies in time after time after time. So it's very yeah, obvious. That's when the nigga is 12 years old and got three kids. Yeah, well there we go. Well, there we go again. But he's got but he's he's got insane ball striking and Pep has recognized that. Hence why he's always running off Haaland. He's always He's always he's always getting into those into those little spaces to shoot. How many times I want you guys to actually cast your minds back to Phil Foden's game in general. How many times has he had a mazy dribble or a little mazy run kind of thing, and it's ended in him laying it on the plate for someone else? He's always manufacturing chances for himself, not for his teammates, guys. And that's and that's a very very key thing to to remember. I'm not criticizing his game, but we have to recognize what he is. It's, it's, I don't. I don't feel like it's, it's a bad thing to say. I don't. Feel, I don't feel like it's a bad thing to recognize what what he is. You know, God. And what he is is the stock mm. port Wesley Schneider. Okay, let's move on. Let's respect Iniesta <clears throat> and call this nigga what the fuck he is. Wesley Schneider at best. Oh, <laughs> I think that is a perfect place to end because he is Ozempic Wesley Schneider. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are going to end it here because I do not want this to keep going because we can we get we can rant all day. Trust me, we we got time, but we don't want to give you that time because guess what? You want to spend your time with us on July twenty fourth at Legends Bar, which is west, which is six West thirty third Street in New York. Uh, zip code is one zero zero one. So yes, Legend Bar. We're going to be there doing a lot I live show in New York. Um, come out, hang out with us, talk to us about life, football, and all of that stuff. We'll be there, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Euros was fun. We had a great time this summer. We have Olympics coming up in a few weeks. Um, but yeah, the football don't stop. Um, and we thank you guys so much for always supporting us. Um, Coach, Dean, y'all got anything you want to add before we get out of here? Yeah, ju- just a reminder, legit, like, guys, come and show up because the entire gang will be there. I'm flying 3,000 miles to meet some of you weird. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, but, but I'll, I'll be there. We'll all be there. Hopefully, um, you know, we have a great, great time. It'll be so, so good to meet some of you people for sure. So please, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to add? Nah, the, the vibes are good. I'm not going to fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are out. Everyone take it easy. Peace. Peace. Take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot.